Welcome, and today we're gonna to be talking about time management. First step is trying to figure out how many hours should I be studying for my courses? This is a common question that students are always looking to get some sort of magic number out of. There's no real magic number, but in general, our freshmen and sophomores should be expecting to spend about two hours outside of class for each credit hour you're enrolled in. As you go up and you become a junior and a senior here, that's gonna go up to from two to three hours outside of class per credit hour that you're enrolled in. This is because those 3,000 and 4,000 level classes, they require more work. It takes more time to start studying those concepts and being able to apply them in the higher level ways that those instructors are looking at you to be applying those concepts. So if you're in a 3,000 level course right now, even if you are a freshman or a sophomore, you should expect that course to take more out of your week than maybe some of the intro classes or your liberal studies requirements. Like I said, these are all rough approximations. There's no guarantee that studying for this amount of time is gonna get you an A. There's no guarantee that just doing all of this work, putting in the time is gonna make you meet all of those goals that you're setting for yourself. With that in mind, there might be a course that is particularly hard for you. Maybe you're gonna to need to devote more time to that. Maybe there's something that comes naturally for you. You might not need to devote as much time to that, but it's good to go in with these base assumptions for how much time you should be spending. So let's see what that's gonna break down to in a typical semester. Typical semester, you're gonna be enrolled in at least 12 credit hours to be a full-time student. So that's looking at 24 study hours outside of class time per week. You combine that in with the 12 hours that you're in and you've got 36 hours that we're expecting you, roughly, to be working on your classes per week. We know that this is a huge time commitment. That's four hours short of a full-time job. So you need to be planning accordingly. You need to know that you have to treat college as a full-time job. Yes, you will still be able to see your friends, engage in your hobbies, have clubs and organizations and all of those other commitments, but you need to be prepared that you might have to start increasing the amount of time and energy you're spending on your schoolwork. And remember that just because you've been doing it in the past doesn't mean it's always gonna work for you in the future. So this is gonna break down into maybe something like this schedule that you see on the screen. See here, we've got our 24 study hours per week spread across most days of the week except for Sunday. We're trying to spread them out to give ourselves a break, make sure we're not getting fatigued during our study blocks. And by structuring it out this way, we're kind of maximizing our efficiency within our study time. If you were to instead break this 24 hours per week into three eight hour blocks, you'd probably find that it's not getting you exactly where you need to go. Those big study blocks that we try to design for ourselves, it may make the rest of our schedule easier. It may open up more days for us to hang out with friends or have a part-time job, but we get fatigued. It's not very easy to say that you're gonna sit down and really study for six hours or eight hours. You're gonna get distracted. You're gonna get fatigued and stop working. All of that means that you're not being efficient with your time and you're gonna to have to spend more of your time in these study hours. We don't wanna do that. We wanna keep it extremely efficient and in short bursts. And the first step to really assessing where you might need to cut time out, where you can add time in, is to see how exactly am I planning out my entire week? So on screen here, we have a snippet of one thing that we like all students to do. It's not an assignment, but this is a great way to start budgeting your time and see how am I spending every single hour of every single day. Using Excel to make a schedule like this really helps you see exactly where you're spending your time. I would suggest going from midnight to midnight, even though on screen you only see from 7 a.m. to noon, and trying to budget out what am I doing during every half an hour block. Put down the things that you must do first. You have to go to class. That's non-negotiable, so you put that down. If you have a, a job, then you know you need to go to work and you've got that non-negotiable schedule. You need your study time, so build that in. You've gotta sleep, build that in. You've gotta eat, build that in. You've gotta shower, go to the gym, watch TV, hang out with your friends. All of these things that you wanna get done in any given week, start putting it into this schedule. You wanna make sure, first and foremost, that you actually have enough time to do all of the things you're setting out to do in a week. Sometimes students go to fill out a schedule like this and realize that there simply is no way to cram in all of the things that they're trying to do in a given week into the amount of time that we have. But maybe you do have enough time for the things that you want. This is a great way to see that we actually have more time than we usually think. When we start getting really busy and we're not properly managing our time, it's easy to just say, I don't have enough time to get all of this stuff done. I've got to start cutting stuff off my list. 
Well, if you sit down and you make a schedule like this, you might see there's a lot of hidden time that you're not properly using. Maybe it's that you get to class early and you have 15 to 20 minutes of just sitting around. That could be study time. If you spend 15 minutes before every class on your phone or just kind of reading a book for pleasure, that's time you could be studying that adds up very, very quickly. Let's also talk about procrastination. Like I said, no talk about time management would be complete without talking about this thing that affects all of us. Although some of us admittedly are bigger procrastinators than others. That's definitely me. Procrastination is the result of not using these time management systems that we've worked to implement, or simply not having a system at all. There are a lot of commonly cited reasons for procrastination, such as getting distracted from your work environment, feeling overwhelmed with all of the things that you have to get done, forgetting that you have those things to get done, and perhaps the most popular, saying that we work better under this pressure that procrastination places on us. Let's go ahead and take a look at some simple and easy things you can start doing this week to help with all of these reasons for procrastination. So coming up first, if you're getting distracted, it means that you have a distracting environment around you. Simply put, we have to start choosing distraction-free environments ahead of time. On the next slide, we're going to talk even more about what that means, but the important thing to remember is that we need to plan ahead to make sure that we're not getting distracted when we've set aside that study time. If you're like me, then you probably start feeling overwhelmed when you have lots of big items on your to-do list, or you have a super long to-do list that you just can't seem to get started on. And the best way to stop feeling overwhelmed is to start breaking things down into smaller tasks. Just like we said with our goals, we want our goals to lead to clear action items that are easy to just start doing, and we want our tasks to be broken down the same way. Break those big assignments, big studying for tests, papers, all of those things that seem very daunting to get started on, and break them into small things, things you can cross out in 20 to 30 minutes. Not only is that going to help you from feeling overwhelmed and procrastinating due to that, but once you start going and you start crossing all those things off your to-do list, you can regain that momentum and carry it forward and really just start being very productive throughout your day. If you're forgetting all of your tasks or some of your tasks, and that's one reason that you've procrastinated on stuff, then that's a huge sign that you just haven't been using the tools or the system that you've tried to implement properly. So maybe you're not using your planner every day. You're not looking at your calendar every day. Maybe you're actually planning out a week, but then you never go back to check that plan. What you can do here is either reevaluate the tools you're using or try to add in new tools to remind you to use the things you set out to use. I set alarms on my phone. I give myself an alarm when I get into work to remind me to look at my planner, and another one after lunch just to make sure I've stayed on track for where I want to be for the day. So you can try to do stuff like that to help remind you that you actually need to be looking at these things every single day. Finally, for all of us that feel like we simply work better under pressure, even if that's completely true, it's just not sustainable. You're gonna start having so much work for all of these courses, especially as you get into those 3,000 and 4,000 level courses, that if you're simply procrastinating because you think you'll do better, it's gonna catch up to you and it's gonna hurt your grades. At some point, you're gonna to have to start deciding between one thing or the other, and that's when those grades start plummeting. So, one way to retain this feeling of pressure without penalizing yourself is to start creating deadlines ahead of the actual deadline. So if you were to sit down and say, all right, this thing's due on Friday, don't write it in your planner as being due on Friday. Write it as being due on Tuesday or Wednesday of that week. Hold yourself to that new deadline. Now when that new deadline's approaching, you're gonna feel that sense of pressure. You told yourself you're gonna get it done right now. It has to be done tonight. So that pressure starts kicking in, but now you have buffer time. There are a lot of things that come up that are outside of our control. Maybe you get sick. Maybe your internet goes down or your computer crashes, your power goes out. There are a lot of things you can't control that can prevent you from completing assignments, turning assignments in, or just getting your work done in general. And this happens all the time where a student comes to me, it's final minutes of the deadline, and they say, power went out, canvas is down, something's wrong, I can't turn in my assignment. Well, the assignment's been up for three weeks. Why are you waiting until the final five minutes of the window to turn it in? By properly planning and giving yourself this buffer, you're not going to rely on your professor giving you an extension. You've given yourself an extension every single time. So even though you might not always use it, it's there when you do need to have it. Let's talk about study spaces because it's really important that you pick a nice distraction-free environment. 
You want to pick one that's familiar and comfortable. So if you're trying to pick a new place to be studying, it might be a good idea to spend more time there at first. Get a little familiar with it. Make sure that you're not feeling kind of out of your own skin when you're sitting there. So get comfortable with it and make sure that it's naturally distraction free and that you're also not bringing in distractions to this environment. So turn your phones off. Don't just put them on silent or vibrate. Studies have shown that even after a phone vibrates, our brains are still thinking about what might be at the other end of that vibration. If your phone's in sight, you can still be distracted by wondering what might be on that screen if you turn it on. So the best thing to do is just turn it off or leave it in your backpack or maybe even just leave it at your house, in your car, at your dorm, whatever. Don't bring it to your study space. You shouldn't need it for the time during which you're studying. If you are on campus, here are some places on campus that you may or may not have been to that offer some of these distraction-free environments to one degree or another. We have our smaller libraries, places like Dirac. These offer very quiet environments that have lower levels of student traffic compared to Strozier, so they can be great places for people that really need a quiet environment without a lot of people coming in and out. A lot of people like Strozier. It's the main hub on FSU's main campus for all these students studying. It's got all of your resources. There's tutoring there. What I can say is that the higher up you go in Strozier, the quieter it gets. So maybe avoid that first floor. Yes, that's where the tutoring is, and more importantly, it's where the Starbucks is, but that's also where everybody's coming in and out. There's a lot of things to distract you. There's a lot of noise going on. So that's not gonna be a very productive environment for you. There's also the ACE Learning Studio. The ACE Learning Studio is another low traffic environment that if you're looking for a study space or even just a desk to post up at or a computer to sit at, this is a great choice. If you haven't been there, they're located in the ground floor of the William Johnston Building and I suggest you give it a shot. If you're one of our distance students that doesn't come onto the campus at all, or if you're just in Tallahassee but you prefer not to come on campus to study, then just be aware of the places that you're choosing. Don't study in your bed. It's a comfortable environment, sure, but it's too comfortable. You're gonna get drowsy, you might even fall asleep. That's not a productive environment. Don't choose the common areas in your apartment or wherever you live. You're gonna have people coming in and out, trying to distract you, get you to do other things. It's just not a productive setup. Similarly, try not to study in places where you're gonna have access to those screens. I don't bring my textbooks and study at my computer because then my computer's right there. I can easily get online, I can watch Netflix, I can do any number of things from my computer that are not productive. So take all of those textbooks, take your notes, print out materials if you have to, take them over to another desk or another location where you're not tempted to get on those screens. All right, that about wraps it up for time management. Thanks for giving me your time and attention and I'll see you next time.